Well, I'm joined now by the, well, probably the most famous journalist in the country today, Ava Santina, a Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker and the associate editor of the Mirror, Kevin Maguire. OK, elephant in the room time. Ava Santina, well, apart from anything else, I've discovered something today, that Ava Santina is your first name and Evans is your surname. Yeah. I don't know quite why we've called you by your gloriously double barrel first name, as if that's your whole name. But anyway. I think I've been overly polite and just sort of let it has. go, yeah. <laughs> so now I've been reading all about this journalist called uh, Ava Evans. I thought, who's that? Yeah. So, first of all, we're going to start calling you by your proper name. Yeah. Um, this has been a really difficult time for you, the last 24 hours. And I was mm. watching all this happen in real time last night with uh, this GB News situation where Lawrence Fox, who I think is a repulsive individual at the best of times, decided to personally target you in a really horrible manner, uh, in a sexually degrading manner. And he did it on Dan Wooden's show uh, on GB News. As a result, they've both been suspended by GB News, um, which is their action. It's nobody else's. People are saying, well, you know, what about cancel culture? Well, they've been cancelled at the moment by their own network, right? So first of all, how are you? No, I'm good. You were one of the first big journalists to message me last night, and I really, really appreciated it. Um, I, I think, you know, the support has been really, really lovely to see. But, you know, I, also, this isn't really about me at all. I just so happened to be the person that they picked on that night and he went too far with. I think I'm, I was, it wasn't a goal of mine to get them suspended mm. from the programme. But, look, I, I, I just think that... That, that network is, is out of hand and it really needed a bit of a slap down. And I'm, I'm sorry that it's happened the way it has, but I'm glad it, it's happened. Dan Wooten, a presenter, who's seen kind of laughing along with it, um, although he looks a little uncomfortable, actually, towards the end of it, um, despite that, he then tweeted you personally, expressing you know, his apologies and regret and wished he hadn't done it, and said he, he didn't find it amusing. And then Lawrence Fox tweeted revealing their text exchange is showing that Dan did appear to find it funny. Do you see them in two different categories here or accomplices to the same problem? Um, I, I, would, I would say that Dan wouldn't facilitated it and he's an experienced broadcaster and he should have shut it down. I also think that the people in the gallery should have shut it down. Mm. You know, they should have gone above and beyond. But look, I think, you know, last night, Dan Wooten did try to call me many, many times and I didn't take the phone call. And I, I didn't take the phone call because I thought perhaps the truth will come out the next day mm. and I'd rather not... I'd rather not subject myself to a false apology. And mm. judging by the voicemail he left me and the truth that has come out today, it would have been a false apology. I think we've got the clip. For those who haven't been following this, it's been gaining more traction through the day. But let's look at actually what was said. We're past the watershed, so I can say this. Um, show me a single self-respecting man that would like to climb into bed with that woman, ever. Ever. And she sat there, and I'm going, like, if I met you in a bar and that was, like, sentence three, chances of me just walking away are just huge. We don't need these sort of feminist 4.0. They're pathetic and embarrassing. Who'd want to bag that? <laughs> Esther, I can see you literally sort of gawping in yeah, horror at what you're watching and hearing there. And it was just incredibly offensive. Look, I think Fox is long ago crossed the, the Rubicon. I remember first watching him when he was on Question Time. And actually, I thought he... I quite supported him at the time uh, over what went down on Question Time at the time. But ever since, there's been this descent into just trying to be as appalling as he can possibly be and trying to pretend, well, you know, it's free speech. Yeah. That is not what protecting free speech should be about. That kind of stuff has no place on any network. I mean, this, this individual is mentally unwell. And I, I think, for me, what I find the most disappointing is the fact that Dan didn't shut it down immediately. Mm. I mean, when he said, you know, climb into bed with, with this person, I just thought, excuse me, what? Mm. That's, that's not your place. That's completely inappropriate. And as an experienced broadcaster, he should have said, actually, you cannot come on my show and say that. That's how that conversation should have gone. He shouldn't have been allowed to finish that sentence. I mean, th that's just horrific. Um, but ultimately, I think what we're seeing here is someone who exists in an echo chamber. We talk about people being in echo chambers mm. on Twitter and on social media. But actually, there's a real threat of being in an echo chamber in your own personal life as well. And that's something that, unfortunately, can happen quite easily in this industry, especially when you wedge yourself amongst people that have one particular view on any issue. And that's what we're seeing manifest today. He's a grown man. He has children. Thank God he doesn't have daughters but at the end of the day he should know that that's completely inappropriate Kevin he's shown zero remorse Lawrence Fox I mean Dan Wooten to his credit in this has shown a lot of remorse I say to his credit mm -hmm. he shouldn't have done what happened but he has at least said 
it was completely wrong, I apologise, and so on. None, none of that from Lawrence Fox. He's just dug down ever deeper and said, no, I absolutely stand by everything I said. Yeah, but Piers, revolutions dev uh, devour their own children, and here you've got the culture war warriors falling out because Fox is going to take down Wooden. That's what he's done. Uh, and it, it's interesting. I, I didn't know you'd received, uh, Ava, uh, a, a phone message from him all full of contrition, which then you know, he's messaging Fox to somewhere else. But no, Fox, Fox is violent, and it's what happens when you just get cheered by a small segment of the country. Yeah. Fox can go around, he can get a crowd on Twitter, on TV, mm. but they're the same people, and you just lose touch with reality. You I also become think, a really I also horrible think, person. Yeah, I also think that, that what happens is people start to seek ever greater highs. They're like drug addicts. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it's kind of diminishing returns. You go down these rabbit holes, you have these wackos following you, and to feed that wacko beast, you have to say ever more outrageous mm -hmm. things, and you just lose all sense of decency. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what he said last night about Ava was just... It was just indecent. Yeah. It was just horrible to listen to. We can all agree on that. Mm -hmm. You know, if, it, if this was said now on this show, there'd be mm -hmm. outrage, quite rightly. I think that our channel has a wider problem, the number of uh, conspiracy theorists and, yeah. and people who are, quite frankly, nutty. There's almost one channel during the day and another in the, in the mm -hmm. evening when, uh, you know, they're, they're all on their dodgy site shouting about the deep state or whatever it is. But, I mean, uh, Ava Santino, where, um... to call you... I, I like your new <laughs> name I'm yeah. giving you. Uh, Ava Santino, um, have you been on the, on the flip side of this? Has it been a nice experience for you to see the huge reaction from journalists across the divide in this country? Male, female... I mean, I've been... I've noticed it myself. Just the volume of people racing to support you? I'm very appreciative of it, but mm. I'm, I'm really embarrassed by all of it, actually. I'm not really on right. my phone very much. And I think, you know, I've never, ever not wanted to do a debate, especially on this programme. Mm. I will debate anything and, you know, vociferously, I will do mm. it. But this, this is now, like, about my body and about my, just my, my physical being, mm. and it's just giving me this sort of really icky, horrible it's feeling creepy. that I can't quite explain. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Let's move on to something else. Let's, let's get out of this. Um, let's move on, actually, to... Do you know what? Let's move on to this. Chocolate, one of my favourite subjects. This is a galaxy bar. Mm. Uh, it's not as big as it used to be, but it's more expensive. And Mars have now admitted the scam. They've cut the bars and they've upped the price. Are we all as outraged as I am about this? It's for our health, Piers. It's to keep us nice huh? and healthy. <laughs> You have a smaller bit of this nice... It's basically a salad, really, because it's coming from a cocoa pod. So it's, it's a salad with a bit I of... I like your thinking. Exactly. It is a salad. Exactly, but you can't have too much salad. Mm. It's like a decadent salad, so they have to shrink it to keep, to keep you know, everything healthy and yeah. the NHS functioning. Do you know, they've also <laughs> done it with Weetabix, so explain that. What's I mean, that about, you know? Listen. That's like me striving to be healthy every morning and now I'm yes. getting a smaller portion of it. It's, it's, yes. it's an old con from... Companies, look, mm. Mars exists to make lots of money, and here they're going to charge you more for less. Mm. It's, you know, it's how capitalism works, but it feels really, really sneaky. The biggest chocolate story for me is that the, the dark bounty chocolate, the red ones, have been discontinued temporarily, <laughs> right? And I, I, they're my favourite thing. So my, you know, the lovely Kerry that you all know, who mm. you know, makes everything happen in my world here, she just had to come in the other day looking really upset and forlorn, like somebody had died. And I said, what's the matter? Who's died? And she said, no, it, it's the bounty bars have died. I went, what? She said, they're not making them anymore. I was like, this can't be happening. So I've launched a campaign. Uh, Emily Maitlis and others have joined in. Um, but on a positive <laughs> note, celebrations, mm. those big mixed boxes of chocolates, they stopped putting the bounty bars in, the, the, the milky ones. And so now, because of an outraged response, they've now come up with a bounty-only box of celebrations. Oh. I... So I think this is a start, but they're the wrong ones. What we need <laughs> is a special box of the red ones. You're and never then, happy, are you? Then, well, you know what? <laughs> I don't ask so much in life. Honestly, I'm easily pleased. Kerry will tell you I'm easily pleased. I've never heard of anyone eating a dark bounty. I, I get I in. All I want is I want about that. three or four cups of tea when I get here as I monitor my notes and prepare for you special guests and so on, and then I want to have... A dark red bounty. Yeah. And currently, I can't because they have been discontinued. First world problems. No, so if, Mars, <laughs> if Mars are watching this, I need them to understand just what this is doing to me. It's actually sending me slightly crackers. So uh, I need I need to have that. Um, good to see you all. Uh, Ava, I'm very sorry that you went through that. 
Thank you. I really am. You had the full support of all of us here yeah. at Talk TV, not just on this show. I think we all, you know, we hugely value your contributions as a journalist and will continue to do so. Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry you went through it, but I'm also gratified that most right-minded people in our profession were as outraged as I was and you guys were and yeah, everybody yeah. else was. So we move on. Good to see you.